Hi, Judy from Witch Peace Craft. Welcome to my post market vlog. Yes, I've had my market day where I had my charity store, which was yesterday. It's late Monday night here. I've worked today and I thought I'd give you a little update on how we went at the market. Well, first of all, it didn't rain, so that was a big tick, but it was extremely hot. But I had one saving grace I have never done before and not even thought about. A while back I was watching Trish the Knitting Lady and she was showing us her prep for Cy uh, Hurricane Ian. We call them cyclones. Hurricane Ian and the things that she had prepped ready. And one of the things she showed tweaked my interest. She had a rechargeable fan that lasted six hours and it was a decent size and I wrote down the name I googled it and it wasn't too expensive but freight to get it into the country was really expensive because they're not sold here that particular brand so I thought oh, I wonder if you can get something like that here so I googled rechargeable fans mm, I must be a blonde because every camping store stocks them I work next to a big camping store. Across the road is a big camping store. So next door had sold out and I wanted across the road. And I bought myself ta -da, a rechargeable fan. This was amazing. It recharges off mains power or a car battery. It's a decent size 12 inch fan and boy, did it help until the sea breeze kicked in? It lasts about six hours, I think, which is more than long enough for what I need when I'm at the market stall. And oh, it was amazing. I cannot believe I have gone, excuse me a minute, I'll just pull. Sorry, that was a message filling up the screen. Um, I can't believe I've gone all these years without thinking about can buy a rechargeable fan but it is awesome and I must thank Trish the knitting lady for sharing her her tip with us see Aliani channels are full of information not always to do with yarn that's really valuable to people she's across the other side of the world and she helped me out by showing this fan so if you haven't watched Trish the Knitting Lady, please check out her channel. The link will be in the description below. She always makes me smile and laugh. I really enjoy watching her. And she doesn't have a lot of subscribers. but So think about subscribing and giving her the thumbs up. You never know what information you will learn from Trish. I've learned a few things, but the fan tops the list. So how did the day go? Well, sales weren't great. They were down even on last year's November sales. And the reason being wasn't just the heat. A large charity decided they would have a Christmas craft market on the same day at the same time in an air conditioned pavilion. And that's where most of the local people went. We don't have a lot of tourists around at the moment because it's too hot and it affected the traffic at our market. There wasn't much foot traffic, there was a few lookers and not many people buying. I did have 32 tea towels and sold 30 of them. They are still my number one seller. But yes, I was disappointed in the sales. I didn't make a lot of money for Emma's Quest, but I did manage a small donation. But everything has a silver lining because I did set up the containers for change recycling bin, like I said I would. Now I got a few cans donated, or bottles and cans, but the big thing was a couple came to me and said, we have absolutely heaps at home and we don't know what to do with them. You know, we're too lazy to recycle them, but we just keep saving them. And I said, got their contact details and said, Doreen, Emma's mum does a recycling run once a week, either Thursday or Friday, depending on what Emma's doing. She picks up from restaurants that collect for her because it actually is 10 cents a container 
refund and you can donate it to charity. You can register your charity and get your own Containers for Change ID number. We have one at our fund and Emma has one at her fund. And she actually took a photo screenshot of the number and the details because her husband said, look, if I find time, I'll run them to an exchange place and donate them. I said, honestly, if you want them picked up, Dorian will do it. I did say to Dorian on the phone today, they are north of us and she's very south of us and that's a lot of fuel. And I did say, Thing has offered to pick them up and take them to the recycling depot for you. Sorry, I'm getting hiccups. If it's too much, you, you travel and time and you don't have time. He said, as long as you let him know, he will do it if they haven't already done it. And I said, the bonus is they want to set up something permanently with their workers at the workplace. And Doreen was over the moon. She said, that's a great contact to have another place collecting cans and recycling or bottles. And it automatically goes into Emma's trust account once they put the ID number in at the um, Container for Change collection depot. So that pleased her. And it was a silver lining on a poor sales day. Uh, what else happened that was funny? Well, I have a lot of spice jars. Sometimes I can't buy the spices I want in packets. And I bought jars and thing, he scrubs off the labels and he keeps them and, you know, sterilizes them. And, and I said to him the other day, the shelves are full. We have to give them away. So unbeknownst to me, he put 45 of them in a box. And he, when we're setting up, he put on free, two per person, help yourself. Well, he was setting up and this lady came along and took two. And then he noticed she tried to sneak back and take another two, which really peeved him off. So he went up, he turned the box around and he put Emma's spice jars, spice jars, silver coin donation per jar and put the donation tin there. Well, people were donating 20 cents and taking a jar. There were 45 and we brought five home and he was chuffed. He'd made a few bucks for Emma's quest and recycled jars that didn't go to landfill and emptied my shelves. So yes, he's quite pleased with himself that he'd had this brilliant idea. So when I come home, like the way it works is we go down there about 5.30, 6 o'clock. Thing helps me set up make sure I'm settled in, had a bathroom break, goes to the coffee van, if it's cold gets me a coffee, if it's hot brings me an iced coffee and then he heads home and then about 10.30 he comes down with a dog, he's brought the dog for a walk and I go for a bathroom break and I wander around and have a break from the store. He's quite good at sales, he's just not great with the FPOS but yeah most ladies who um laugh and are humorous and come back and say oh your husband couldn't work the FPOS and he was so lovely we thought we'd come back and buy these so yeah I never really miss out on sales when he's doing it and um you know you can stay up to three quarters an hour an hour and then he takes the dog home and then at the end of the day which is about 1 1 30 he comes down helps me pack up puts everything in the car and home we come and when I pull into the yard there's um, Reeves. He unloads everything. Me, I literally get out the car, come in the house, drop my bag and hit the shower and have a cool shower to bring my temperature down and cool me down because I've usually got pretty warm. And when I get out of the shower, Reeves has made me a cup of tea and I have that. He also, Reeves, cooks dinner on our market day night so Sunday when I do markets he'll cook dinner for us because he always says well dad helps you and you've both been pretty busy last night he did courage chicken Japanese fried chicken with an Asian salad it was beautiful something he does really well and it was nice and light after such a hot heavy day he is funny however because he talks about your number one sales at tea towels mm. He said, you know, if you make two a day between now and December store, 
you'll have double the quantity and could increase your sales. And I was like, mm, you know what I could do? I could teach you to crochet wreaths and you could help me make tea towel toppers. And he went, no, 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 no. I'm management. I'm purely here for my management skills and to advise you. He cracks me up. He does do a lot of help. I am really lucky to have the boys help me. Um, and they don't mind fundraising. We, we all know Emma and how difficult things are for Emma and Doreen and how it is difficult to fundraise. So they always chip in and do their own their bit in their own way. Um, the other reason I rang Doreen is because she wanted this poster. Um, if she wanted to know if Reeves could design it so she wasn't infringing copyright if she took it to commercially printed and um, it's part of her secret Santa gift for her person and her new job and he did it and he even got it printed for free at work his boss said it's her just did you're only doing one and yeah and she was over the moon so she said oh my secret Santa gift will come in under the limit <laughs> and um, yeah so he does do things they both do and um, I'm so lucky to have them. So that's the update on the markets. It wasn't a great sales day. We raised a bit of money. I still have a lot of stuff for December market, but not many tea towels. Reeve said to me tonight, how many tea towels have you done? And I said, I've got three. He said, you're supposed to have four. Two yesterday, two today. You better do another one tonight. And I went, management cracking the whip. Always the way, isn't it? The workers work and management sit there and give orders and crack the whip. And you just laughed. Anyway, guys, thank you for stopping by and listening to my update. I have three tips for you if you're planning on doing a market stall or a craft fair that I have learnt along the way. There's probably more tips than three, but these are the three I can think of. Make sure you're well and truly organised. For me, I just get a lawn area that's got a painted area to the size with a number and that's mine. That's my bay. Um, you can put more than one bay. A lot of people have two, but I just have the one. I need a gazebo. They prefer you to have shade in a gazebo because it can get hot. That is um, tied down or pegged down because it can get quite windy and they can become missiles you need tables and covers like you would normally set up a small business that is tip one tip two is make sure and it's probably the most important tip you have done market research and you know you have one bestseller that will cover your costs i pay a small fee there will be other hidden costs and you need something like that to meet your costs. And if you sell more than meet your costs, well, you're making profit. Tip three, craft markets and fairs aren't always busy. There's a lot of time when you're sitting there. Um, the lady on the store next to me said, I'd wish I'd brought something like you. She said, I'm just sitting here twiddling my thumbs. I took down, I take down either a big project or a couple of little ones. I actually took down yesterday my luck of the draw number six and caught up on that and they did that in the cooler times and then when it warmed up to be unbearable I had a small cotton project I worked on between customers it it's also creates interest in your craft store I've had a lot of people stop by and ask me what I'm making how long have I been doing it is that crochet or knitting actually a 24 year old girl um, slipped up yesterday she said oh I can to a friend oh, I can knit like that I can do that and the lady next to me who actually is a seamstress said well that's really clever because that's crochet not knitting and she went red and walked away and Rose next to me said I couldn't resist I've been listening to you be polite all day and she said for God's sake you're crocheting you're not knitting <laughs> And she does have a few little crocheted things on her stall that her friend does. I met her friend yesterday. Um, she was looking at the lovies that um, I do from Z's. She'd never seen that before. And she said, oh, we'll make some, but not for this stall. We won't put them out here. We'll do, because they do every week markets. It is part of their income. 
She said, do you mind if I do them and sell them at other markets? No, go for it. No problem with that. And yeah, she said, we just won't put them at this market because they know Holloway's is the only market I do. So you will meet great friends. You will have fun, even if you don't make a lot of money. And uh, it's always interesting. You meet some really interesting people with some great stories to tell. Older people like to have a bit of a chat. It's an outing for them. And um, Rose said, gee, you're really a good listener. I said, I think when they want to tell you a bit of a story, they've come out because they're lonely and I want to be there to listen to them and make them feel better. So always keep that in mind. It's not just about the money you make. The silver lining is having fun and meeting people. They're my tips. They're my experiences. I hope you've enjoyed my post-market update. For those of you new to the channel, watch some of the past videos. You might understand what I'm rabbiting on about. I hope you enjoy my yarn adventures and stick with the channel. Until next time. Ah, oh, make sure you check out Trish the Knitting Lady. You won't be disappointed. Till next time. Stay safe. Stay well. Bye for now.